All right, on Newsline tonight, we want to shed our light on uh, Siaya County. James Arengo is the current governor of that county. Remember, James Arengo has been a senator for the same county for two terms, and now he is sitting on the driver's seat, having oversighted the uh, onset of devolution in the Senate. Now he's there running the county, and he's got to answer very many questions. Governor Asante Sana for speaking to us this evening. Thank you. Thank Let's get straight into it, all right? Yes. So you participated in lawmaking in the journey towards the realization of Constitution of Kenya 2010, in the drafting of devolution, and then you went to the Senate and you oversighted, you basically midwife to the birth of devolution into the country. You sat in the Senate where you were summoning governors to come and answer questions. Then you went to the people and told them, I'd like to be the governor. And they gave you that mandate. Yep. When you got into office, from what you've seen in the last um, 100 days of, of plus of, of uh, being in office, is it what you expected to see? Well, you know, there are some challenges that uh, have emerged since I went to, into office. Uh, because managing a government is very different from, you know, uh, uh, lawmaking. Uh, but I'm true to the challenge because I've been part of the executive uh, before at the national level uh, as a member of the cabinet and running a very critical ministry at that time. So uh, I think, yes, there are challenges, but I don't think those challenges are an unsellable one. We are trying to do our best uh, to deliver service to the people of Sierra. Let's start with the bank, the first things that you had to yeah. do in order to understand the state of the health of the county. One of them is you set up a task force to look at the pending bills mm -hmm. and look at what the, county, the previous county governments had been doing. Mm -hmm. You got your report from yes. uh, the uh, Ordered Oakland team. What did they tell you? They told us a lot of things. First of all, you know, there was a lot of uh, debt in, in terms of pending bills. Uh, they also uh, came out uh, with the revelation of a huge uh, hole in the budget. Uh, there were unexplained expenditures uh, which up to now we are trying to grapple with. I think that helped us to know this, uh, the state uh, of the finances of the, of the county. And I must say, that state is still, you know, uh, not very good, uh, because although those problems are historic, uh, we have to deal with them. So that is one thing that uh, the UCO report uh, revealed to us, not that we were totally uh, uh, ignorant mm -hmm. uh, even well before we could see that uh, the county government faced uh, serious uh, financial problems. Se secondly, they um, uh, told us about the state of how the county was being run, mm -hmm. especially its systems, uh, the financial systems in the, in the county. There was uh, a very loose, unwarranted, and illegal use of the impress account. For example, you could find in one single day, uh, through a single individual, there could be withdrawal of nearly five to ten million shillings, uh, crafted to defeat the requirement that you cannot withdraw more than a million shillings. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you look at, at the aggregate, ag aggregate withdrawals from a single individual, you could find a group of five or six people were drawing 20 to 30 million shillings in a day. Now, uh, that helped us, you know, uh, uh, seal these holes. Uh, they also talked about uh, the way uh, the public uh, service within the county was managing the affairs of the county. There was a lack of uh, accountability in nearly all the proce uh, processes. And departments were dealing, uh, were working in silos. Mm. So there was no rhythm in the way the county was, was being run. But I think more importantly, the UCO report was not just talking about the problems. It was also talking about the future, yep. what we can do better. And one of the things which resonated with what uh, we placed in our manifesto, we tried to answer the question, what can be impactful and transformative in the lives of the people of Sierra, we, um, to, to graduate from a subsistence economy mm. uh, to a more, uh, uh, you know, uh, productive 
uh, sector, uh, sectors, let me put it that way, that, that would uplift the lives of the people and have value addi addition. And we came to the conclusion, uh, at the time we, we, were coming, we, were, we, were, we were formulating a manifesto, and the OCO report also came with the same uh, uh, blueprint that the uh, pillar and, and the tool that we must use in Siaya mm. in order to transform the economy is agriculture. Agriculture in its many forms, including the blue economy. And we are trying to do a lot of work in agriculture. To start on the to, agriculture. To, 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 to make, we'll to talk make about that, that in yeah, greater detail and tell yeah. us all the programs yeah, yeah, that you're putting yeah, in place. Yeah, yeah. Just looking back into um, that audit mm. and trying to understand the things that were happening, this is not a one-year thing. Mm. It was not a two-year thing. Mm. It was must have been a systemic mm. issue. Mm. What does that say? And did the UCO team actually also ask the same questions? What that, did that say about those institutions that are mandated with oversighting the executive? Yeah, the, it, this, this was systemic uh, over many years. But you know, the work of uh, doing a serious audit of any county uh, um, it is done by the Auditor General. Yeah. Uh, it is not Parliament, it is not the Senate, the National Assembly, or the County Assembly. The Office of the Aud Auditor General is an office that empowers uh, Parliament, and for that matter, matter, the County Assemblies. So when they do an audit every year, uh, these factors should, should come out. Uh, and, and over the years, as uh, the Sierra County government was being audited, not a lot of these revelations were coming up. Even in terms of the, uh, of the role of the Office of the uh, Control of Budget, yeah. because every withdrawal from the uh, exchequer uh, must be supported by documentation and also uh, approved by the Control of Budget. I, I think it was not a failure by any one institution, but all these institutions, cross -cutting yeah, issue. it was a cross-cutting issue. So um, I am glad to say that uh, although there was some opposition uh, in the um, uh, creation of that OUCO task force, yeah. that you know, uh, a private entity or individuals cannot audit public uh, accounts, it, it, must be the, uh, it must be the sole mandate of the Auditor General. Mm. But uh, I, I, I am I'm told, because I've not had a formal report, that the audit that has been carried out by the Auditor General more or less confirms what the OCO, It mirrors what the it mirrors what, uh, what it came out with. Then what kind of guarantees would we have, uh, would the people of Siaya County have, mm -hmm. that your administration would do anything better mm -hmm. if the institutions that are in place, the independent offices, the controller of budget, the Office of the Auditor General, and then feeding into the County Assembly and the Senate, if it, if it escaped them mm -hmm. for two terms, how do we know that officers in your government will not well, do the well, same? Well, you know, the worst thing that happened was that, uh, you, know, you know, the Auditor General is like a, a pathologist or, or, or someone who does a post-mortem. It is too late. Uh, you, you take curative measures, but they not, cannot be as effective. I think in the Constitution and the P Public Finance Management Act, and uh, the County Governments Act, uh, if these laws, uh, which must be complied with, if counties, and for that matter, the like Sierra County Government, were to comply with these laws, because they're required to, if you read the chapter dealing with public finance, yep. the responsibility is on the County Government and the Executive to ensure that there's prudent use uh, of public resources. Uh, and I can guarantee you that uh, looking at the Public Finance Management Act uh, together with the County Government Act and the planning processes, you know, uh, getting used to a five-year plan, uh, the annual pl uh, plans, mm -hmm. the, the budgeting uh, process uh, and the procurement law that is in place, if all this works together in, in harmony uh, and people are conscious of their roles, uh, and where there's convergence of roles, if this is done properly, uh, I don't think we can be able to get into the kind of situations we're getting into. Like, 
something which uh, suggests that even within our, our banking system and the banks uh, played a role, a very negative role, mm. is that no bank would allow such kind of withdrawals of money on any single day. Which, because which they can see. Yeah, they can see, they can see. And who is withdrawing the money? Uh, a lot of times it was, you know, messengers, uh, people who are not in the finance department uh, playing a role like that. I mean, it, it was systematic, but uh, it was obscene to some extent. Mm. Now, I have, for example, said we must have a pre-audit, a prepayment audit outside, you know, what is required by the Public fi Finance Management Act, but even as a, an extra coercion and security, uh, before requisition is made for any payment, there must be a pre-audit before payment mm -hmm. of, of documentation. Because, you know, after payment, uh, sometimes docu documentation disappears. Yeah. Now, but if you have a, a pre-audit uh, validation of of the documentation that is required because you know if you want to pay some money there must be a requisition that requisition must be based on a budget yep. and if it is the expenditure that is in the in the budget also there must be a procurement plan so there's measures that if you put in place in 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 in, in making some of those payments that were made mm. if those measures are put into place without somebody trying to out, outsmart the system, uh, uh, I think things can slowly can be brought on order. Yes. But you can imagine in one single financial year, a county loses nearly a billion shillings when the development budget is less than three billion. You, know, you can imagine what kind of situation arises out of those circumstances. It is, it's terrible. It's, it's horrible. Yeah. And the things that you're saying, that the system that you're now instituting, you know what I hear? Yeah. They sound very good, mm. but I also get some words coming into my head, mm. red tape and mm. bureaucracy. Mm. Because if we have to go through this whole rigorous process before mm. expenditures mm. take place, mm. then that means that there are people who are just saying, We've been waiting for this. But, but, you, know, but you know, gov gov governments have to have some element of red tape. I don't like it. Uh, you have to have a certain element of bureaucracy. If it was in the private sector, you would not have to go through these processes. You, you, for example, you, you can decide who to give a, you know, a, a, a job to do. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to go through a, a, a rigorous procurement processes. And those procurement processes is also as a segment of, you know, uh, procuring of goods or disposal of goods, uh, run over even two, three financial years. You want to build a bridge, uh, the thing ends up with objections, you go to court, and you can go to the highest court in the land. And, and take have, years. Yeah, years. And um, on the other hand, the co controller of budget is saying, your absorption rate is low because you're not spending that money. Thank God that in our financial systems, public financial systems, uh, you, you can roll over development funds, mm. which means that they may be available in the next financial year. Uh, but if it's recurrent, if the financial year goes, th that's the end of it. Now, doing what you must do this year, and you're forced to fo uh, do it in another year, you don't know how the state of the economy is. It's one year lost. If it was a school to build, an ECD classroom, you know, the, that particular child who was in school at that time will was, have either wasted the opportunity or going to school where there are no teaching tools, no resources, no furniture, and all manner of things. I'm looking at the documentation as we wind up on the issue of finance. You inherited pending bills worth about 960 million shillings. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the reports say that so far you've paid nearly half of that. Mm -hmm. How are you able to pay nearly half of this? We, we what, 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 what needed to suffer for you, you know, to allocate this money? What, what needed to suffer is that uh, some of the projects that we needed to do, we can't do. Uh, because that is coming out of uh, development money. Uh, and we are paying for jobs which should have been done with money allocated last financial year. We're using the money for this financial year uh, to pay for a project uh, that was either done 
in the last fin financial year or was done but not completed or it was done and it was unbudgeted. You know, the Constitution yeah. says, you know, uh, that debt must be paid fast. It has got the fast, you know, consideration in uh, uh, spending public money. So, so long as, you know, somewhere in the system, somebody uh, signed the papers, there was an award and so on, you may find actually you're paying for a project which was never budgeted for, and if it was budgeted, probably it was never done. So it is lost two, three times, four times over. Uh, but we said, you know, it's better to put the county in a, a good financial footing, even if you missed to carry out certain vital economic uh, uh, projects. Yeah. Uh, but if you, uh, you are in a good financial uh, system or footing, you're so much the better. I, I remember one of the greatest things that uh, Bill Clinton did is that he took over a government which was in debt uh, and because of uh, management and vision and having a proper bl blueprint uh, and paying debt um, and uh, uh, in the end doing things the right way. When he left office, he, you know, he, he left a lot of surplus money uh, in the system. Mm. Now, we, we, are in that, we are not in that uh, comfortable situation. You, have, you, you uh, we, still we, have to pay them. We, we have to pay them. And, so, and we have no alternative because, you know, if they go to court, uh, you know, they get summary judgments. And there will be penalties. And, and, then, and then you have to pay it. Some, for, for example, you know, one of the things that people have been accusing me uh, for not doing in CIA, uh, I had um, uh, uh, a previous government which uh, appointed chief officers. Chief officers are supposed to go with the governor. But he appointed some of them to 2026. 20, some have their contracts run into 2026. 20, I should form a new government with my own chief officers. Now, when I looked at uh, what had happened uh, with some of the chief officers that were sacked, and looking at the law and the, the rulings that have been made by the courts, uh, is that you end up being sued. Uh, and if you're sued by 20, 30 people, you translate to an average of eight to ten million shillings you, you, you could be paying uh, just because of um, uh, you know a breach of contract you you could end up paying 100 200 million uh, to somebody who is uh, is not working mm. uh, and somebody else who is earning uh, so one has got to tread extremely carefully in order to protect as the constitution, constitution requires of us to manage public resources in a prudent manner. So when they are accusing you, they are basically saying that, you know, you are not forming government and appointing the people that you ought to be appointing. Mm -hmm. You are not uh, then delivering on the promises that you had made. Mm -hmm. But then here you are, you're saying you've got to balance between this and mm -hmm. uh, following due process. Yeah, yeah. At the end of it, Mishimua, you know, it's politics. No, no, I have a mechanism. I put a mechanism in place where, you know, uh, these guys, um, they, they, they serve for a time. You know, like um, the county uh, chief officer for finance, he had a contract running nearly to 2026. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, when we put these issues to him, uh, he actually said, I am putting in my resignation uh, and effective from April. No, I thought that was a better way instead of sucking him he goes to court and uh, the, the the auditor general uh, his concern would be was the termination of contract in accordance with the law because we've got a, a two conflicting rulings mm. that says when a county government signs a contract is it does not matter whether it was the old governor or the new governor it's it, a just, government. It, yeah, it's a government yeah. uh, just like uh, you know, the, 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 we have a new administration nationally. They kind of run away from commitments from made, yes. made by the previous government. The people, people have actually talked about devolution and across the country the whole issue is the balance between recurrent expenditure and how much is allocated to it mm -hmm. and the balance to, uh, with uh, the development budget. Of course, there's that whole legal thing of 30% 
uh, at least 30 percent must go to devolution uh, to to development mm. but many governments are, account, are accused of bypassing and ending up overspending on recurrent yes but you know part did you inherit a bloated workforce yeah, yeah. For example, uh, let me go back to that argument because I think the, the argument that you're making is at the heart of the matter. You know, governments are not there for hiring people and providing employment, basically. It's just to make people's life better. They, they should be having services, you know, be it in health, water, and a cross-section of things that public gov uh, governments are supposed to do. Now, the Constitution says resources should follow functions and you have a situation where the national government retains some of the functions uh you're looking at uh, you know uh, the functions of the county governments in relation to the national government in agriculture health there's a lot of roads there are a lot of things that national government is purported to be doing yeah uh, like amaram road in my county if people see it in a poor state the first point of call the is the county government uh, and the and governor you're right uh, but you find a lot of those roads were reclassified what were county roads were recla reclassified to be you know uh, national yes. uh, roads so to speak uh, i don't understand why you know for example urban roads in a, in a little town like siaya or even in a big city like nairobi should be undertaken by the, uh, by the national government. Uh, <coughs> but all this is a mechanism of ensuring that resources stay at the national level. And when they stay at the national level, uh, the boys up here, uh, who, who all the time have their hands in the tail. Mm. People accuse county governments a lot. But the big money is in the national government. So they try everything possible uh, to be spent at the national level. You know, like the hiring of um, uh, of essential equipment uh, that was forced on counties. Yeah, that was d done through an arrangement by the national government, and it has it has not worked well in terms of prudence use uh, of resources. So I, I believe, at the end of the day, uh, we got to uh, recalibrate the way resources are shared. And, and ensuring that uh, the national government uh, d does not take more than 50% of resources, particularly in development, because I, I, I can tell you mm. what matters to the people uh, in health, uh, in, in primary, uh, pre-primary education, in agriculture, water, they are the day-to-day -day concerns of the ordinary people, yes. and yet the resources. Are still at the national level. Are still at the national level. So let's talk about some of those. Let's yeah. talk about agriculture. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So you said that your focus uh, in this government is to look at how you can empower your people mm -hmm. to become more productive. Mm -hmm. You have rolled out some programs, mm -hmm. big on subsidy, mm -hmm. big on seed subsidy, mm -hmm. certified seeds, mm -hmm. fertilizer. You said earlier that you're actually supplying, uh, giving fertilizer to farmers at a lower price than what the national government is doing in the national subsidy. So you're spending a lot of money on subsidies. Mm -hmm. Explain and justify but, uh, On the agricultural sector, because I have, no doubt, I have no doubt that this is the game changer in Sierra. Eighty percent of that county is arable. It is not comparable. You cannot compare it to nations like Israel who have to rely essentially on irrigation and things like that. 80% of that county is, you know, arable. Yep. And yet, we, we are not food secure. We, we, without uh, cereals coming from Transoya and from Uganda, you know, we'd be in a terrible, terrible dire situation. Now, uh, uh, people uh, are concentrating on subsistence. Subsistence at the crudest level so we say in order to make a difference we got to expand uh, our activity in agriculture and you cannot do it the same old way using a hoe every morning or or or, or, or using a, a, a an oxen drawn plow yeah. so we say that the secret is to mechanize 
and, and although through the resources we have, uh, uh, li uh, which is limited, we were in possession of about 17, 17, 17 tractors, uh, which we, we, we have uh, allocated to each sub-county. Mm -hmm. And we gave ourselves a target of doing at least 3,000 acres. We are now at about 2,100 acres. Uh, if I was there at the beginning when the budgeting w was being done, I would have aimed for 10,000 acres. But, you know, you, you look, it's not the best, but l um, drive through CIA, and, and I do that every morning. Mm. I'm impressed by the, 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 uh, the, the number of people who have been prepared, prepared their land, um, not necessarily through this subsidy, uh, but people are beginning to see the value of mechanization. Now, the difference is, if you go uh, to a, a, a private operator, you'll hire his tractor or her tractor at about 3,500 mm. um, uh, and, and even 4,000 shillings, depending on availability. But we are hiring ours out at 2,000 shillings. And if you use our tractors, we give you free seeds. Now, we cannot, g there's an outcry. A lot of people are uh, complaining. Yep. Yep that uh, they didn't get seats. Uh, but we will never have enough money to give so it. how away. are you deciding who gets seats? We're deciding, first of all, on uh, those who used our tractors. Secondly, on those who are plowed. Uh, look at those people, particularly who have used mechanization. Mm -hmm. Then look at the needy. There are some people who cannot just make ends meet. Uh, they have a piece of land, probably just in about an acre. Uh, so we say this one is a special case. And in some instances, we, we have even given a free tractor service to one or two farmers uh, per ward. Um, and after you get the seeds, and there was a sense of timing, we try to plow at the right time and give the seeds at the right time. Uh, I found out that you know the demand for seeds was too high. Mm -hmm. We have done some adjustment, and I'm expect expecting more seeds in the county through the Kenyan National Trading Corporation next week. So that areas that didn't quite get enough, although all areas did not get enough, but, but uh, uh, you know, they, they will have a second chance. And then when you have used our, 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 our tractor service, you have used our seeds, we also try to supply you with subsidized uh, fertilizer uh, our packets, uh, I think it's a kilo or two. Uh, the government is selling about, national government is selling about 900 shillings. We are selling at 600 shillings. Uh, and our fertilizer uh, is also going, you know, uh, the supplies we had is almost running out. Uh, but in August, I want to do an assessment and find out, you know, whether this exercise has turned around, you know, the way we farm. Mm which, you know, uh, is supposed to modernize farming and uh, 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 by use of certified seed and fertilizer have we increased uh, yield mm -hmm. per acre. All, all those indicators are going What's to come... the targets? You must be working with the target. You have yeah. a target of 3,000 acres of yes. land. Yes, yes. You've already done 2,000. Yeah, more plus. than 2,000. Um, you then obviously have a target of how much yield you expect. Yes. What's that target? Now, we, 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 we are saying that, you know, if there's pr uh, ground is prepared in good time and you use the certified seeds and the fertilizer, you should get in excess of about 20 bucks per acre, mm -hmm. at least. Uh, but then, you know, the ecology of the area is quite different. There are areas which are drier. Uh, there are areas which are more fertile. There are areas which with black cotton soil. And in fact, we, we, we did uh, uh, soil studies. Mm. So we are not taking the same kind of seeds uh, to, every, to every place. Every zone. Yeah, we, 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 we are taking the right seeds to those zones. There are zones also we don't use fertilizers at all, at all. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, whereas we would have thought that uh, fertilizer was good, uh, but it has a problem with their water. You know, like in Uyoma, there are certain places if you use fertilizer, then it negatively affects the crops. Mm. Then we are 
uh, trying to translate into more, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, have a variety of crops uh, like sorghum, millet, cassava, uh, sweet potatoes, uh, soya beans. Uh, we are trying experimentation uh, to ensure that uh, instead of having these two seasons, uh, long rains and short rains, people actually should be able to grow, uh, plant and grow crops all of, throughout the year. Yeah. Because you know you have some wetlands also where you can use irrigation. Uh, so uh, people should not be waiting uh, for, the rainy the, for the rainy seasons. Um, uh, if you're near a river, you're in a wetland, or you're nearer the lake, you should be able to do anything with your land at, at, at any time. Now, aquaculture, we, 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 you know, we, we do fishing. There's uh, cage farming in, in the lake. Uh, but we're saying we, there must be value addition. Mm. Uh, for example, um, we don't have fish processing plants uh, in the entire CIA. Uh, there's a facility in Luanda Cotino that we are trying to, you know, put in resources uh, and have a finished product in Luanda Cotieno, fish, uh, package, and ready for the supermarket. When will this be ready? Um, How long will it no, take? No, no, no. That, that we, we, we we're waiting for the next budget okay. uh, to do that. And we want to have partners in the private sector also to put some money. Sometimes when you have private sector involved in the manage, management, like in places like Homer Bay, where private investors are, uh, uh, have been at it for a long time, mm. you, you, you find better results. Because governments are very bad managers, especially of resources. I am doing a mill. Can you imagine that uh, the grass, the rice that is uh, grown in Siaya is taken to Uganda for milling by our farmers and brought back. And then brought back. Yeah. Now we, we are constructing uh, a milling plant in some place called Usonga, mm -hmm. within Alego, Usonga sub-county. Yeah. Uh, and, and that should be ready in uh, June, July. Uh, 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 because it is, we are groundbreaking next week uh, for that uh, 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 rice milling plant. Uh, so, um, we, 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 we are trying to make lives uh, better in the area of water. That was another big thing in our manifesto. Uh, uh, Bondo, even as we speak, uh, they, they, they have water shortages all the time mm. because we are not producing enough water to pump into the system to get a Bondo. Uh, when we supply water to CIA, uh, Eurasian Bondo. They don't get water for a week. Uh, there's a project we're doing, which is about complete. They are doing a test run this week, and in two weeks, uh, the water situation in Bondo will be a lot better. Bondo is growing at an alarming rate, uh, and it needs constant supply of water, mm. uh, because water is life uh, in every way. And, uh, there are institutions there where uh, without water you can easily, you know, get water you wouldn't be able to so answer. Which is where now uh, we're bringing the issue of the collaboration between the national and the county government. Mm. Um, issues such as water, mm. right? It's uh, a concurrent function. So the county government is doing something and the national government has been talking about the projects. Mm -hmm. uh, small dams into mega dams mm -hmm. um, and looking how that can be used for supplying water to homes and also water for irrigation. Mm -hmm. Have you reached out or have you had a conversation uh, with the national government on how those can be harmonized? Mm -hmm. You know, like now we have a, a big water project uh, is, is nearly 1.5 billion plus. Uh, which is called Ogunja Okwala Sega Water Project. Mm -hmm. It should cover two sub counties, Ogenya and Ogunja constituencies. Uh, it, it is in the last phase, uh, and we are partnering with the national government. Um, and the last mile connect connectivity is going to be the challenge uh, so that you don't just have water uh, produced but you, you make sure that water gets into people's homes. Uh, that is another project which, if we complete it, 
Uh, there's about 300 million challenges that we need to unlock uh, to improve on that last mile connectivity. I, I think it will change uh, the lives of many people in those two sub counties. What role is the national government playing? The, 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 most of the money has come from the national government through a World Bank, uh, uh, you know, a World Bank funds. Yeah. Uh, but the last mile connectivity and the initial phase of the pro uh, project. Uh, came from uh, the county government. Mm. Uh, there are also plans in place to do a major water project which will cover large areas in Rorieda, Asembo, Wioma, and uh, the southern part of Sakwa. Uh, uh, but those are plans in place. But we are also doing boreholes uh, in two weeks. Uh, I've got some two major boreholes that are completed in Oyoma that I'm going to launch in two or three weeks' time in Yimbo and, and many places all over mm. uh, where uh, we think uh, that uh, smaller interventions are more important instead of waiting for a big fund for a big project uh, that will never come. We deal with the resources we have in order to make sure that people can get safe drinking water. How do you balance between all these interests across the county mm. and then going into the sub-counties? Mm. Because we understand the sub-counties is communities. Mm. There are communities who may feel, okay, so the people of Ugenya may, may be seen because you have been, you are from Ugenya, then other people from Alego, Songa, the other, and Rarieda may think the Ugenya people are being favored by the governor. How do you balance that, 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 so that everybody can see that this governor is not the governor of Ugenya, he's also the governor of Alego Songa, he's the governor of Rarieda, he's the gov governor of... Mm -hmm. No, no, that, that can't really happen because, you know, generally in the government systems we're using uh, uh, program-based budgets and, and five-year plans. In fact, we should be having 10-year plans. So now we are discussing the next uh, third generation county integrated development plan where everybody, stakeholders are involved in looking what uh, are the major projects we're going to do in the next five years. And uh, you, 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 everybody can see when the planning process is going on, where these projects are. Uh, and they're interrogated uh, to ensure that there's uh, fairness in, in project distribution. So it's not a matter of looking at those projects on a yearly basis. You, you look at them over the five, five years with the yeah, CIDP. Yeah, CIDP. That would entail yeah, yeah. proper public participation, yep. which is one of the things that also county governments have been okay. Yeah. Government has yeah. been told, you know, has been yeah. accused of. Yeah. Public participation is just a tick boxing exercise. Yeah. <laughs> Meaningful public participation is important, but it also costs money. Uh, because a lot of times when you invite people to f for public participation, they come from all over the county, all over the sub-counties, yeah. and in the wards. Uh, you need to facilitate them. Uh, and that brings problems. But we have to go to the people to ensure that uh, we satisfy their needs. We don't dictate what they need. They're the ones who inform uh, us of their needs. And I, I, am, I am right now working on a, a, a plan to make public participation more meaningful. Uh, because I think we have not been doing very well yeah. in public participation. So how is the Oringo administration doing it differently? Yeah, you know, for example, uh, because of, 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 of bad handling of finances, the county government was finding difficult uh, to pay project management committees. These project management committees would uh, sit and find out whether the project is being done properly, yeah. evaluate it, and if there was public participation at the beginning, they, they would be aware of what is required. Now, because at any time when those meetings were required, the county government would not be having money because it, they didn't plan it, or if they planned it, the money was misused. So the, the, things what, the, the whole thing was turned around, that the contractors were now the ones paying 
<laughs> the public <laughs> management committees who are supposed to oversight. So M and E is actually yeah. being funded by the contract. By the contract, which, and I, which, which is an un anomaly. It, it's actually an abuse of the process. Uh, so we sh should not have public participation in name. Uh, and I, I'm determined uh, to, to even benchmark with the counties that have been doing it. I hear you talking about challenges of you know transporting or ferrying people into a meeting place. Mm. But even the law allows you, in fact, the law expects you mm. to look at various ways using new media mm. and digital technology mm. to mm. conduct public participation. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Why are you still fixated yeah, that, on that, bringing people into that, a room? That, 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 that is doable, but you know, you're talking about places where you know um, rural electrification has not been effective. Yeah, so they can use their phones, but not everybody, you know. Is, is is has got a mobile phone not everybody is 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 is, is, is uh, you know digital or, or uh, smart enough to use uh, these solutions or, or, or smart gadgets um you know and i've realized that you know for example you put up a tender that you you want to procure some land for the county and, and the owner of that land doesn't care uh, you know, he, if you want to buy his land, you have to go to him. Mm. Uh, and, and eventually, if you tell him, you know, uh, we are put on a tender, uh, he will not be able to fill in the forms. He must be, if miscompliant, they don't want to hear about them, those many stories. So there, there's uh, basic uh, 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 problems, institutional and uh, capacity uh, which we must work around in a smart way uh, in order to get the right results. Governor, you have to work with many people now. As the head of the executive, you must work with the county assembly, mm -hmm. you must work with the senate, you must work with your fellow governors in the council of governors to uh, champion and advocate for some yeah. issues mm -hmm. and you must also work with your deputy. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you know what's been in the news lately mm -hmm. is this supposed tiff between you mm -hmm. and your deputy William mm -hmm. I didn't really want to talk about that because, you know, uh, everybody should know his role. Everybody should know his role. I, 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 I was a cabinet minister. I had two assistant ministers in my ministry. Uh, and bo both of them knew their role. Um, and, and I know my role. And I know uh, the, even that my role I can delegate. If I over delegate, it also brings uh, certain problems. Mm. So I must be able to delegate and monitor. Uh, but deputy governors, uh, although they are they are not flower girls, but if 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 they know their role, the essential role that they have is to assist. Uh, the governor, just like at the national level, mm -hmm. the deputy president should be uh, assisting, you know, the president. You know, look at Kamala Harris, very smart lady. Uh, she even ran for president. Uh, and she was in the news all the time. In fact, there are some people who think she made a mistake. Uh, Stepping down. Yeah, because her profile is not what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, but how this, that's how the system works. Uh, she, she has to uh, uh, know the extent and nature of the role. Even Biden with Obama. Yeah. The other one was the uh, young senator from Chicago. There was, uh, uh, Biden was already well known. He was already a statesman, uh, much older than Obama. But you know but, the but, politics but, but, but the relationship. I mean, Yes, we, we can see the letter of the law and what it says mm. about the role of the governor, the role of the deputy. Mm. But you also understand the politics. In fact, when you are a senator, mm. you are on many occasions advising the governors who would be brought by the county assemblies to the Senate mm. on matters of impeachment or what to do to make sure that there is good relations between the governor, the deputy and the assemblies. Mm. And you also know the agitation by the previous deputy governors on wanting to have a substantive role yeah, for, for, assigned for, them by the government. For, for, that's what I'm saying. If you look at uh, CIA as a test case, uh, uh, there was no 
a position that was dysfunctional by account of not having responsibility. That, that's, that's one of the things that I, I'm very good at. I, I, I like in every circumstance that a team I work with, they're, they're effective in the, in the work they should do. So I, I, I know that uh, it would be wrong to have a team uh, and it's not just about every governor. See. Mm -hmm. you, you could have a, even a, a member of the county executive committee uh, who is supposed to play a certain role. And, and, and you as governor, literally, you, you can play all those roles. Uh, but if you did, you would be making a big mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody stick to his, uh, to his lane, uh, but you're in the same race. Uh, and you must finish together. Uh, so, all systems in place and all working in accordance with the, uh, with the manual, <laughs> if I may put it that way, uh, uh, then uh, this animal called the executive can work in, in a very effective manner. All said and done then, Governor. Have you called your deputy? Have you told him, let's see it, please understand the role that I've assigned you? Well, 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 well. If you, if, if 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 you could be told uh, how many times we have been sitting together, uh, you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. So it's not for lack of not being able to uh, sit together, or even being in 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 cabinet or the county executive committee, and making things work. Uh, that I can tell you. You know. Uh, I, 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 I almost over-delegated, uh, and this arose at the time when we were here in Nairobi doing the election petition, the presidential election petition, for a period of nearly a month and a half. Uh, but uh, essentially, I think that uh, uh, I don't have a big problem, essentially. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know what my mandate was. I know the law, I know the constitution, the county government act, all the instruments that drive county governments. And I'm working within uh, the, the, the letter and spirit of the law. So I, I have no doubt that CIA will be a great county within uh, uh, these uh, four years that I have. Oh, you have the law. Yeah. Let's elevate the conversation to national level. Mm -hmm. Uh, among the 47 governors, I think you're among, or you are the most experienced in terms of legislation, how long you've been in public service, in public oc occupying state offices and public offices. Now, the Council of Governors has been agitating for an increase to the division of revenue. Mm -hmm. The budget policy statement, as was presented and uh, approved by the Budget Committee of Parliament, talks of 385 billion shillings, 485 billion shillings for the next financial year. Governors have been agitating and asking for 425. Mm -hmm. uh, the, commission, the, the Commission on Revenue Allocation has been saying at least 415. Yes. What's the way forward on this? The, the, the way f forward is to look at the centrality of devolution in our system of government. Either the national government gets it or they don't. Uh, if you look at that chapter on devolution, why we devolve? Because the good thing about this constitution, it doesn't say, you know, do this, do that. Uh, when there's a system built like the chapter to deal with devolution, or public finance, or the chapter dealing with an independent office, or even the security forces, it makes statements that are not general, very specific as to why, why devolution. Uh, and they say devolution is in to ensure that uh, resources get to the grassroots uh, and that people directly, directly participate in the management of their affairs, which they cannot do at the national level. Now, if the national government were true to the words of the Constitution, more and more devolution within the framework of the Constitution would better achieve the purposes of the constitution. But, you know, the national government uh, cent uh, centralization to run away from it uh, is 
is a big deal for them. Uh, so you, you find the big wigs in the treasury uh, and uh, in, in, in the command systems, which involve ministries like Interior, mm. uh, they would never want to hear of it. Uh, and therefore, this is a debate that must continue. It will only end at a time when uh, you have a government in place which truly believes in devolution. Uh, like in the United States of America, we are now able to talk about California being the fifth largest economy in the world. Uh, because that's how the uh, system has emerged. The only difference is that uh, America was, you had those uh, uh, 13 original states, yeah. and they agreed to come together. That's how they started. We were one colonial state uh, or colony mm. uh, that along the line, we made a decision to devolve. To devolve. Yeah. 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 So, so, so the approach was a, a little different. Mm. So you would have key people in national government. And I know everybody until they get power. And you know, power corrupts and absolutely power corrupts absolutely. So they said, Lord Act, Act, Act or other than this gentleman who came with that uh, saying, uh, you'd find that even the truest believer, uh, the, the test of the pudding is in the eating. So give somebody power. Eh? Like now we have a national government in power. Yeah. And they're going very much the opposite of what they promise. Uh, because suddenly they realize that, you know, more power is sweeter than yes, sweeter at, than a, at a personal level. level. Do you think it would be a good strategy? Or well, because uh, some of the conversations that when you ask these questions of members of the National Assembly, particularly those from Kenya Kwanza, would say, let the division of revenue indicate 485 uh, billion to the counties, but then conditional grants that go specific mm. to areas like agriculture, counties get conditional grants, health, counties get conditional mm. grants, mm. because the national government is also implementing its uh, national manifesto, <laughs> you know, which is big on agriculture and health. You know, that condi those conditional grants can be abused. By who? By the national government. Because, you know, if they're not distributed fairly, you'll find uh, those conditional grants, in fact, the big, big, big con uh, grants, if you want to look at it over the last 10 years, where the, those conditional grants have, have gone, especially in big projects, like hospitals, mm. big, big, you know, level five, six hospitals, referrals uh, that go before, beyond level five, uh, you find it can be abused. Uh, and, 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 and there was legislation uh, that tried to ensure that there's some fairness uh, of national governments uh, in their distribution of these grants. Uh, they, they, they could be uh, just and fair. But it can be a political tool political too. If you do an analysis, correct analysis where those conditional grants are going, you, you find... So there's inequity in, 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 in the distribution. Inequity, yeah, is inequity in the, in the, in the, dis, in, in the distribution. And uh, even, um, you know, without legislation that came on what parameters to look at, even when you're dividing money uh, as between counties, uh, and I'm glad at, at, at that level, uh, Senate tends to work as one uh, entity, as, as a chamber of the House. Uh, I think you, you find there, there's some kind of balance, mm. unless there's a, thrown, th a stone thrown into their midst. Like, you know, the, the, la the last time <laughs> we, we had a, the a, of a, a, a way of distribution of resources horizontally. Mm. Uh, there was a lot of debate in Senate uh, where, you know, you, you, you found the counties uh, from the coast, from the northern part of Kenya, uh, were, were getting a, an odd uh, location because of the, the, the way it was being nuanced that numbers matter more than area. Uh, um, it was trying to change something which had worked uh, to achieve a political objective. Yeah. 
uh, I hope that that doesn't happen in the future. Governor, thank you very much for thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Governor James Orengo is from Siaya County. He's been telling us the work that uh, his government has been doing in Siaya. There is a lot of development focus, as he has told us. Of course, there's also the issue of balancing the interests of the various communities and the various interest groups within the county and making sure that all of them feel that they've been served. Thank you very much for watching Newsline tonight. Have a lovely evening. My name is Eric Latif.